Hello and welcome. Today I wanted to talk you guys through a hack that you can use to upgrade some of your lower end ultra sabers, stunt lightsabers, should you have a mind to. Uh, you may have noticed if you're ordering ultra sabers sabers that the low end stunt sabers give you an option during the purchase to upgrade to a lithium ion battery setup. Now that costs a little bit of extra money and most of us don't opt for it. We just go for the standard configuration. So let me talk about that standard configuration. Okay, this is one of my older sabers right here. This is an Initiate V or Dark Initiate V3. That's uh, this is one of my beater sabers. So this thing has gone through hell. It is thrown in. It's been thrown into trees. Uh, it's been submerged in water. Uh, it's had quite a bit done to it, and you can see it still still does the job. I've got quite a bit of ambient light here, so you're not going to see quite the illumination. But uh, this is a silver through a red day blade. Um, let me go ahead and turn that light off real quick just so you can see. That's a little bit better. Okay, so still does the job, um, but over time, you notice that as I pull this out here, uh, I've got sort of a cobbled together cheesy foam chassis that I made out of a piece of packing foam that I cut a hole out of the bottom and then shoved in there and over time it's actually become circular. Uh, inside of that is the typical battery setup. It's a black battery setup with four AAA batteries in it. Okay, I've just got it with cheesy Costco ones. Get that light back on so you can see a little bit here. I'll give you a close-up of that battery pack. Now you'll notice that that thing is in no kind of shape. Uh, the connectors are all rusted out because, like I said, this thing has gotten submerged in water from time to time. Uh, the thing is held together with a generous amount of wire tape because the whole black plastic battery pack has cracked apart uh, from several drops. Uh, the little dividers that are supposed to keep the batteries from uh, coming out of alignment have broken off. That's why this chassis is there, because without this, the batteries on a slight bump will get out of alignment and the saber will turn off. So, um, it's a fairly uncomplicated machine, these stunt sabers. So like I said, you can just keep wrapping the thing up and wrapping the thing up and it'll just continue to work for you. Uh, however, the problem that I have with this battery setup is that it's inconsistent. Those of you who have AAA setups for Ultra Sabers, you notice a little bit about how dim this one was also. These batteries are, or this, uh, this setup is decently bright when the batteries are fresh. And then the batteries are only fresh for a very short period of time and then they get lower and lower and lower and lower in charge and your saber gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And that's kind of irritating. What you end up with is batteries that, while easy to replace, you end up having to replace them a lot if you want your saber to actually be functioning at peak performance. So today I wanted to talk about how we get a lithium battery into an Ultra Saber stunt. Now the lithium battery that I've got right here is an 18650. Now you'll notice this is quite a lot larger than a standard AA. When Ultra Sabers offers their uh, lithium ion upgrade, what they offer you is lithium ion cells that are about the size of a AA battery, and they run two of them. Uh, those, I mean, they're okay. They're a little bit harder to get. Charging them is a little bit more complicated, and they don't quite last as long. Uh, these larger uh, 18650 batteries are, th this one's uh, 3400 milliamps, 3.7 volts, uh, and these things put out a pretty standard current and they last a real decent amount of time and they're pretty easy to recharge uh, and you only need one of them. Okay, that's why a lot of the other lightsaber manufacturers in the industry use these, standard. I don't know why Ultra Sabers doesn't, but we're going to look at how to fix that. Uh, so let me talk about what you need, and then we'll get into the process. It's less intimidating than you may think it is. You are going to need an 18650 battery. Now these things you can buy from China, uh, you can get them from some of the Sabre manufacturers. If you pick them up locally, they're going to cost you 10 to 15 bucks. If you get them online, you can get two of them for about eight. So three or four dollars a piece, really, uh, as long as you're willing to wait. 
you're gonna need a battery holder for them. Price on this thing is negligible. I think I paid like five bucks for a pack of 20 of these things. And they come pre-wired with the red and the black. And they fit these larger battery cells. I'm not gonna plug that or not. Well, might as well. No, I'm not gonna plug that in right now. All right, you're gonna need a pair of scissors. You're gonna need some kind of cutting board, maybe. You're gonna need a knife. You're gonna need a soldering iron. You're gonna need some solder. And you're gonna need some kind of surface that won't melt when it's exposed to hot stuff. All right, now when I busted out that soldering iron, some of you were probably thinking, well, this is outside of my wheelhouse. Um, soldering irons are, we're not talking about soldering on a circuit board right here. This is a rough, rough job. You don't have to have any sort of precision skills. And a soldering iron is not really a precision, or not really a uh, complicated tool. You can pick one of these things up. I think I got this from Walmart for like five or six bucks. Uh, solder costs you, a cheap little thing of solder costs you two or three. Uh, bulk solder costs you a little bit more. So really your, your cost in parts, uh, it's about $10, $15 to perform this upgrade. All right, the biggest part though is being unafraid to get into your saber and, well, being unafraid to do this. All right, now that's the biggest hurdle to get over, is being unafraid to do that. I know that a lot of you guys, the saber is your baby, and if you start tinkering with it, you're gonna mess it up. Um, being able to do that first cut. All right, we get this piece of junk out of there. We're gonna be putting this in there. Now the next step here, that's all we really needed the scissors for as well. Next step is going to be to trim these wires back. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Uh, that's why I brought out this pocket knife. Now some of you may be thinking, couldn't you use wire strippers for this? Yeah, certainly you could use wire strippers and you can go to your fancy luncheon with your electronic buddies and bring your wire strippers with you and talk about how effective they are and how much better they are than a pocket knife over a nice mimosa. But uh, I don't happen to have wire strippers right here, so I'm just gonna use this pocket knife. So bear with me a little bit. So, what I've ended up doing, and you notice that Ultra Sabers gives you very little wire to play with here after you get that battery pack out, but let me go ahead and give you a close-up. First thing I did was trim back that blue shrink tube that they had on there, and underneath that I found myself a red and a black wire, coincidentally very much like the red and the black wire attached to this battery pack, uh, positive, negative. Uh, all I did was I scraped the top of those wires a little bit with that pocket knife until I could see the metal inside. Then I pulled that metal inside, folded it out a little bit, and snipped the remainder of the, uh, the wire casing back from it so that I had a little bit of exposed wire here. Now, for the next part, we're gonna move in our soldering iron and our heat resistant surface. Bring our battery pack over. Now, if I were so inclined, I could just wrap black to black and red to red and hit it with, uh, or end up uh, wrap it up with some uh, wire tape and it would work, but it would also fall apart from time to time. So I'm gonna make things a little bit sturdier here and we're gonna give it a little bit of solder. Now all I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna lay move the red out of the way here, I'll deal with the black first. I'm gonna take my black wire, I'm gonna twist the exposed ends together. And I am by no means an expert with a soldering iron. As a matter of fact, I'm a rank novice. Uh, but that should just give you hope because that means you don't have to have any skill with one of these things in order to do this job. Okay, so lay those next to each other. 
Put the soldering iron on the wires, touch the solder to the soldering iron, So you see I have my black wire to my black wire with just a little blob of solder there connecting the two. Now I'm going to do the same with the red. So inelegant, I know, and I could have trimmed those wires that were on that battery pack down a little bit. I could have braided them together to make it look even nicer. I didn't do any of that because I was just uh, getting the job done quick here. Next step is to take a piece of wire tape. And the wire tape's job is not to hold the wires together. The wire tape's primary job is to keep the exposed wires on the positive side from touching the exposed wires on the negative side. I could use heat shrink tubing if I wanted to be, once again, fancy and go to the mimosa party, but uh, I don't have any heat shrink tubing, so I'm just gonna use a piece of wire tape. I wrapped it around one wire, sealed it off. I'm gonna use the same piece of wire tape, wrap it around the other wire, then wrap it around the two together a few times. And there I have it, a pretty strong connection soldered, wrapped in wire tape. Let's test it out. Okay. Here's my 18650 battery. Let me turn off the light. Alright, so still not a powerhouse, it's a lot better without a day blade, but if you get this battery in there, for one, you're dealing with something that's going to shatter a whole lot less. Since there's not four metal batteries knocking around inside of one piece of plastic, there's just one battery inside of a piece of plastic, this thing can take a serious beating and nothing's going to happen to it. Uh, it also gives you a lot more room in the hilt, it's a lot easier to get out, which does mean that if you just put it in like this, it's going to bang on the edges and your saber's going to rattle. Which is why I suggest this next step, get a little bit of foam. Now I like to save packing foam from weird things that ship to me just for the purpose of doing weird stuff like this. So all you really need to do is cut a little bit of foam about the length of the battery pack. Alright, and let's see, yep. Little rectangle of foam, about yay big. Okay, we're gonna put it in here. I could, if I wanted to, tape it to the battery pack with some wire tape, make it all up nice and pretty. Uh, might as well, just to keep it on there a little bit better so that it doesn't just come off when I open it up. <clears throat> There we have it. Battery pack, a little bit of foam. I could have run those wires underneath that foam if I wanted to make it a little bit neater. You can economize all you like or you can just wire the sucker, tape it up, shove it in there. Your call.
All right, and there we have it. Contained, no rattle, easy to take out, easy to charge, a little bit better illumination, more even illumination as the battery drains in power, and quick upgrade. Now this is a lithium ion cell stunt saver using one lithium ion cell instead of four AA batteries. This is going to save me in the long run on battery price and the upgrade saved me, uh, or the upgrade only cost me, like I said, about $15 in parts and a little bit of time. Uh, hopefully this review, or not review, uh, hopefully this lightsaber hack has been of use to you. Uh, if it has, please like and subscribe, make a comment about wanting there to be more such things, and I'll see what I can do in future. Uh, please join me back for more reviews.